in this segment, we will introduce uh, thyristor converters. Uh, we will look at uh, the applications, uh, basic principles, and uh, single phase thyristor converters. Thyristor converters today are being used at uh, mostly at pretty high power levels, and uh, their uh, their their operation would be uh, on uh, you know on three phase systems. But in order to understand uh, how they operate, uh, we have to start uh, with the basic principles and first look at uh, their operation in uh, single phase uh, circuits. So the applications are. Uh, you know, most uh, prominent application of uh, thyristor converters is in high voltage DC uh, transmission systems. So let's let's begin. Uh, we we have seen these uh, solid state power devices uh, and uh, their uh, current handling capabilities and their blocking capabilities, uh, and uh, the symbols are shown here. Uh, these are switches. Uh, which can be turned on or off by uh, by control signals or uh, by gate uh, by the gate circuitry, if you will. But uh, uh, thyristors, they are in a class of their own, where uh, they have uh, you can call them sort of a semi-controlled switch. They are not a fully controlled switch as such, and uh, they can be made to operate. Uh, in, at very high power levels, high, very high voltages and very high currents. So uh, we are familiar with uh, diodes. Uh, diodes have just this anode and cathode, but uh, thyristors are a four-layer device as shown here. They have an anode, uh, they have a cathode. In addition, they have a gate, which allows us uh, uh, to be controlled in a way uh, that we will look at uh, shortly here. So let's uh, put a thyristor, uh, the symbol is shown here, in a very primitive circuit. Uh, and uh, so the input is, let's say, a sinusoidal AC uh, voltage, and uh, the, at the output uh, is just a resistance. Okay. So if uh, this uh, thyristor were to be a diode, as soon as this voltage becomes, uh, input voltage becomes positive, uh, current would begin to flow, okay? But since we have a thyristor, uh, even though this voltage uh, across this thyristor, uh, this is anode here and this is cathode here, uh, even though the voltage across this has become forward biased, we can prevent it from conducting until the gate pulse comes at this angle alpha over here. So this is the gate pulse, which is uh, this current I sub G uh, flowing into the gate of this. Uh, so we just need to supply a pulse of this current, and uh, then this thyristor begins to conduct. And uh, once it begins to conduct, uh, it latches on. Okay. And once again, we think of it uh, for our discussion purposes. Uh, there's an it's an ideal in the sense that voltage drop across it is essentially zero. Uh, we are assuming that, uh, and so we can neglect that here. So, so you can see here that uh, at uh, at this angle alpha, when the gate pulse comes, uh, this uh, thyristor begins to conduct here, and therefore this VD becomes equal to VS as shown here, right? And uh, the current begins to flow, which is uh, this current is uh, just uh, VD over R and therefore it has the same waveform as VD. And then uh, at some point, uh, actually at this point, the voltage goes to zero, current goes to zero, and uh, then uh, this current cannot reverse, just like in a diode circuit, and it becomes zero over here. So as you can see here, uh, we have uh, uh, a waveform shown in, uh, in this uh, uh, board, uh, in bold, uh, which is the, the waveform across v, uh, across this resistor, V sub D, and it has an average value which uh, can be computed over one uh, complete cycle here uh, by integrating this uh, voltage V sub D waveform. And uh, you can see here that we have control over its average value by controlling this angle alpha over here. 
So, this is an extra degree of control that we wouldn't have if this were to be a diode here. So, uh, let us extend this. To, uh, now, the load uh, on the DC side is uh, a, an inductive load. It, it also has an inductance, not just a resistance here. So, once again, we can delay the conduction of this uh, thyristor by this angle alpha at which this gate pulse comes, this is the angle alpha. And uh, so, the current begins to flow in the circuit once it turns on, this current begins to flow. But uh, because of this inductance over here, even when this voltage has gone to 0 at this point, the current is still uh, finite. So, that current has to have a path to flow and that, uh, you know, keeps this uh, thyristor conducting until this current goes to 0 and then becomes, uh, then stays 0 till, the, until this intro instant when once again after this angle alpha, this uh, thyristor is gated on. So, the bottom line here is that uh, uh, once the thyristor begins to conduct, uh, the gate loses control, if you will, okay. And only after the current uh, comes to zero because of the circuit in which this thyristor is connected, uh, this uh, uh, gate regains control, okay. And in this case, what we see is that uh, even after this uh, voltage has gone to zero, uh, the current is still flowing and uh, this V sub D is equal to V S, which has become negative. So, you also have this negative portion here and then at this instant, when the current goes to 0, then V D again becomes 0 here when this current is 0. So, once again, we can find this average value of uh, V sub D uh, based on the amount of inductance we have as well as this uh, angle alpha here. <laughs> So, having seen those uh, uh, basic principles, let's put this. Uh, uh, let's put these in, uh, into test in a single phase uh, thyristor converter. And these uh, thyristor converters uh, uh, consist of let's uh, four thyristors, and they are numbered one, two, three, four because uh, for uh, you know positive half cycle mostly. 1 and 2 would conduct and uh, well I am talking I should not even say that in the positive half cycle. Uh, for half cycle I should say uh, 1 and 2 would conduct for the other half cycle 3 and 4 would conduct here. Okay, And they will conduct in, in the sequence shown here. So, well 1 and, 1 and 2 as a pair and 3 and 4 as the other pair here. To see how they operate or how the circuit would behave, first of all let us neglect this inductance here. We will take care of it later on. And let us assume this I sub D to be some constant current as shown over here, okay, I D here. So, that current is always flowing and so we have this uh, simplified circuit in which we will look at the operation, uh, okay. <clears throat> so, just to review, uh, what would be the case if uh, instead of thyristors, uh, we had diodes here? And we redraw that uh, single phase circuit as shown here, where 1 and 3 make up the top group and 2 and 4 make up the bottom group here. So, one of them would conduct from the top group and, this, and the current path would be completed to one of the diodes in the bottom group here. And let us assume that uh, on the DC side, the inductance is very large. So, this current ID basically has a, uh, is a DC this I D R is D C here, okay. And uh, so, so you can see here that when V sub S is positive, the input voltage is positive, uh, diode 1 and 2 would conduct here and uh, then uh, V D is equal to V S. So, when 1 and 2 are conducting, V sub D is equal to V S, the incoming voltage and uh, then as soon as uh, this this voltage becomes negative, uh, then uh, 3 and 4 take over. So, there is instant change of current from uh, pair 1 and 2 to pair 3 and 4 and in that case V sub D is equal to minus V S. So, that is why the, the waveform for V sub D 
would look like this here. Okay, by given by this expression over here. All right, and the, the current waveform at the input here would be, uh, you know, positive during this half cycle and negative during this half cycle here, like this here. So that's how a, a diode rectifier circuit in single phase with these uh, assumptions uh, under these conditions would operate here. So let's see what happens when uh, we replace the diodes uh, by thyristors, okay? So now uh, we have an extra degree of control and uh, so th these uh, thyristors one and two are ready to take over when this voltage V sub S has become positive, okay? So they are ready to take over at this instant of time which will we can call the natural uh, instant of conduction. Uh, but uh, since uh, we haven't really supplied the gate pulse to one and two, they cannot conduct. So, so this current, which we are again assuming to be a DC current like this, uh, uh, since one and two cannot conduct, uh, three and four have to keep on conducting, okay? And when three and four are conducting, this V sub D is equal to minus V S. So we have this waveform for uh, V sub D. And uh, then at this instant of time, uh, we apply the gate pulse to thyristors one and two. Immediately, <coughs> this current shifts from three and four to one and two. So this current IS jumps from being negative to being positive at this instant of time. And uh, and then uh, uh, one and two take over and uh, the operation continues. And uh, at this instant of time, when V sub S has become negative, uh, three and four are ready to conduct, but they cannot because the gate pulse to them is again delayed uh, from the instant of natural conduction by this angle. Uh, let's again call, label this alpha. And uh, at this point then, the current would shift from one and two to three and four, and uh, V sub S would be equal to, uh, V sub D rather equal to minus V sub S. So it becomes like this here. So V sub D waveform would look like this, okay? So th these things are reiterated in this slide over here. You can see that when one and two are conducting during this interval from alpha to alpha plus pi over here, uh, Vd is equal to Vs and Is is equal to Id, okay? And uh, when thyristors uh, three and four are conducting here, which from, from this instant alpha plus pi to alpha plus two pi up to here, then Vd is equal to minus Vs and Is is equal to minus Id. So these are the waveforms we get, and once again we can find the average of the this voltage V sub D by integrating from alpha to pi plus alpha. We just need to look at one half cycle, and uh, so integrate uh, this voltage waveform over this interval divided by pi because we are just looking at half the uh, the time period, and uh, we get this value here. So we can see that uh, this average V sub D is uh, proportional to cosine of this delay angle alpha, okay? And this is under the condition that we have said that uh, the input side inductance is equal to zero, okay? And we can also uh, do Fourier analysis on this I sub S waveform. And we see that the peak value of this uh, is given by this expression related to how much the DC current is on the DC side, and we can also equate the, the power. So the power on the DC side is VD times ID, and on the AC side, it's, uh, you know, the product of um, uh, the RMS value of the input voltage, which we assume to be sinusoidal, uh, RMS value of the fundamental frequency component of the current that is drawn times cosine alpha here. So we can uh, simulate the circuit in uh, piecewise and uh, get the results as shown here. Here in green, we uh, 
see the the voltage waveform V sub D and uh, in uh, in uh, red we have the input current IS yeah. okay. So the, uh, this completes uh, uh, this particular segment dealing with uh, single phase uh, thyristor rectifiers and uh, we first try out by saying what applications uh, we are going to be looking at and what the basic principle of operation is.